Today's video, I'm going to cover what I think is the most underrated Warlock build in Destiny 2 that is anchored by a subclass that has built-in worm husk like health regen and one of the most deadly supers in the game. When Season of the Lost first launched, it launched with a slew of buffs and updates to the Warlock subclasses, and initially the Bottom Tree Storm subclass and updates it got received a lot of attention from the community. Because of this, the changes to Bottom Tree Dawnblade have flown under the radar for the majority of this season, when in reality, it also receives some next level changes that in my opinion make it one of the best subclasses in the game to build around. Starting with the changes to Phoenix Dive, this perk previously was an ability activated mid-air to quickly descend to the ground, and upon doing so to restore your health, and doing this in super also restored health and super energy. Keep in mind this ability will always restore roughly 50% of your health, which is similar to the Hunter Exotic Worm Husk. One of the downsides of this ability used to be you could only do this straight up and down, and depending on your positioning, it could actually be more detrimental to your survivability. Bring in the changes with this season, and there are two big ones. First, they have reduced the delay before your dive starts, lowering the amount of time it takes for you to start your dive, which helps us get out of dodge quicker. Secondly, they added the ability to dive in a direction now. Think of it as similar motion to Shatter Dive, minus all the cheese. Now you can use Phoenix Dive to dive towards cover, allowing you to be more intentional with using this ability to aid in your survivability. Combine this with your Warlock Rift, and this ability is huge for increasing survivability and helping you get a nice chunk of health in between engagements. This is especially useful in scenarios where you just finished a fight and are left weak, and you know the enemy team is trying to push in to clean you up. I found this burst of health will often catch enemies off guard because they are expecting you to be lower health. But similar to your rift, timing is everything with this ability since there's a delay between your weapon ready speed after you dive and there's a 45 second delay where after you dive you can't slide around. So keep these things in mind when using this ability so you don't get caught mashing your slide key only for nothing to happen. The next big change this subclass saw was the change to the ability Igniting Touch. Now, solar ability kills and kills on burning targets now cause targets to explode and burn other nearby enemies. And your charge melee, which does 150 damage, not now also places a burn on the target. And the detonation radius was also increased from 6 meters to 7 meters. This change boosts this subclass into a whole different tier because of its ability to delay enemy recovery via burn damage from your grenade or melee, and then add in the potential for collateral kills when you kill enemies while they are burning. I've had many grenade throws that turned into multi kills due to one enemy dying from the burn of my grenade, exploding, then killing another enemy. The great thing about this is this change also applies to your super. So now when your blade hits an enemy, it causes them to explode, creating more opportunities for easy multi-kills from just one blade, where before, you may have needed to throw multiple to get the same amount of kills and wasted more of your super as a result. This makes the super on this subclass S tier, since now you have the insane tracking, extended super duration from kills, and then adding in igniting touch and having enemies explode from your super kills makes this super one of the deadliest and longest lasting supers in Destiny 2. Thanks so much for watching up to this point, and if you've been finding this video helpful so far, consider subscribing as it's a totally free and easy way to support the channel. Make sure you don't miss any future build videos. So now that we've talked about Bottom Tree Dawnblade and all the reasons that you should be running this subclass from Igniting Touch, Phoenix Dive, talking about the super, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the build and what I run with this subclass because this is all I've been running in the Crucible lately starting with our exotic and i've been switching between affidian aspect and transversive steps now depending what you value more is going to determine which one of these exotics you're really going to want to lean towards for me personally i really value the responsiveness and snappiness of my weapons and just making sure they overall feel smooth uh, especially when swapping between a hand cannon and a shotgun which is what i mean and so that is why i really enjoy affidian aspect but also having the speed of transversive steps, the improvement to mobility and your movement around the map is definitely uh, very noticeable with transversive steps. I also love that it reloads your current weapon, which makes us have to reload a lot less. You have to worry less about reloading perks or reloading mods because you have transversive steps to help you reload those weapons, which is very nice. So I don't think you could e really go wrong with either a Fidian Aspect or transversive steps when it comes to choosing your exotic. In terms of mods, I recommend running targeting mods that go with the weapons of your choice. I will talk about the weapons I recommend in a minute, but I run shotgun targeting and hand cannon targeting for my helmet. And with my Affidian Aspects, which I use, I run Shotgun Dexterity and Hand Cannon Dexterity just to make them swap even a little bit quicker. Some people may think this is overkill. I don't. Like I said, I want my weapons to be as responsive as possible. For our chest piece, again, just going with the theme of whatever mods are going to improve the performance of your weapons is what you're going to want to use here. So I'm running Unflinching Hand Cannon Aim and Unflinching Shotgun Aim. And for my boots, I'm running Shotgun Holster and Radiant Light. 
Radiant Light is gonna give us plus 20 strength. That's just gonna make us get our melee back faster. And Shotgun Holster I actually prefer over Shotgun Scavenger because again, it just makes it to where I have to reload my shotgun a little bit less. And I feel it gives like a transverse of steps like effect of automatically reloading your weapons. Then lastly for my bond, I'm running double outreach just to help with that melee cooldown and then powerful friends. You could run something instead like double bomber or if that's something you prefer over your melee. But for the sake of what I'm using right now, I'm using double outreach. I also have a community discord where you can ask questions, show off your favorite weapons, builds, and even destiny fashion. So consider joining using the link below to link up with other destiny players. Getting into our stats that we should be running on this build. Number one, first and foremost, is tier 10 recovery. This is gonna give us optimal survivability. It's gonna reduce how long it takes for our health to regen. And then when you pair this with Phoenix Dive and the roughly 50% boost in health you get when you pot or use your Phoenix Dive, combining that with this high of recovery just makes your recovery insane. You survive so many different things. And in the footage you'll see, I pop my Phoenix Dive and it allows me to survive an immediate engagement right after that when normally I would have died. And if I don't get engaged right away, I'm just getting my health back that much faster when you combine this with tier 10 recovery. And not to mention this also ties nicely into our class ability or rift cooldown, allowing to get us our rift every 41 seconds, just giving us multiple ways to begin our health back as quickly as possible and just shooting our survivability through the roof. The next stat we should be very focused on is intellect. This is gonna reduce the cooldown of our super. I go all the way up to tier nine here. I don't know if I could fully recommend tier 10 since there's such a small difference between tier nine and tier 10. You're looking at three minutes 52 versus three minutes and 48. And what I would need to sacrifice on the rest of my stats to reach tier 10 for me is just not worth it. And tier nine is plenty fast to get back one of the best, if not the best super in the game on bottom tree dawn. We want to have our intellect as high as possible because as much as Phoenix Dive is absolutely amazing and igniting touch, all these things create an awesome neutral game for bottom tree dawn blade. The super is really what pushes this subclass to the next level. So making sure we have our intellect as high as possible on this build. From there, it's really about what you guys value most. I try to have my discipline and strength around four or five ish. Personally, I would like my discipline to be at five, but I'm sacrificing this a little bit to reach tier nine intellect. But if you have some better stat rolled armor, you will be able to maybe even this out a little bit better than what I have here. And then I also value higher resilience. So tier six uh, for those uh, enemies that like to use Thorn, couple ticks of chaos reach, things like that. This is gonna give you just a little bit more survivability. Also think about shotgun engagements where you survive with just a little bit of health. I feel like my tier six resilience has a lot to do with that. And then I also like using tier four mobility. I find this is a sweet spot for just strafing and walking around the map. Makes my strafe feel a little bit smoother, especially when I'm peak shotting from behind cover. I don't feel like I'm stuck in mud as I'm trying to peek in and out of cover when I have this high of mobility. But ultimately, most important thing for these stats, at least to start off with, is tier 10 recovery and as high as tier nine intellect. If you can reach tier 10 and still have a, oh my God, imagine. If, as long as you can get tier 10 recovery and close to tier nine intellect and not sacrifice too much of your other stats. If you can get tier 10 and not sacrifice anything, then you can absolutely go for it. But overall, this is what I recommend for this build, prioritizing your super and your health regen. Getting into our weapon choice, and I'm going to start with my hand cannon of choice for the past, I don't know how many weeks, ever since Lake of Shadows was a nightfall, I finally got my hands on an adept Palindrome, Mine's Rockin' Full Bore, Armor Piercing Around Subsistence, and Rangefinder. For me, the non-negotiable on this hand cannon for PvP is Rangefinder. It absolutely pushes the range out on this weapon to insane just ranges. You're able to challenge basically any archetype of weapon on the map. It's great for finishing up kills from far away. It's gonna be very hard for anyone who's not using this weapon to challenge you. So I've been absolutely loving the palindrome. Also has a great balance of stats. As you can see, I have a handling masterwork and also through a depth range just to push that range out to the tippy top. Next, I got kind of two recommendations here. Again, if you're a sniper, I have soul is a great option. I have a nice roll here that I literally never use, or I recommend running Practithist. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. Or the chaperone has been an absolute favorite of mine as well. The only thing I or caution about the chaperone is it's very easy to get overly aggressive once you get Roadborn procced. And even though the hitbox and all that is very generous, it can put you in a situation where you basically take yourself out of position because you're trying to take advantage of Roadborn and you end up getting yourself killed. So lately, 
I've been using Frack Resist a little bit better, shotgunning a little bit more defensively, because I found with the Chaperone I was getting a little bit too aggressive and getting a little too out of position too often. Some other great options I also recommend of similar archetypes is if you have a really good uh, time loss fate bringer, I do not yet. I would also highly recommend that. Or a, no, or a normal fate bringer can be just as good as well. I also recommend from a slug shotgun standpoint, Sojourner's Tail. I have one right here with moving target opening shot, which I've talked about in the past that I absolutely love. And as far as your heavy, I'm running Warcliffe because I'm not using any exotics, but of course, if you're using like an exotic like Thorn or Ace of Spades is also very popular uh, and you can't run Wordcliff, something like uh, LMG like Commemoration is always gonna, is gonna be another great option in your heavy slot. I don't worry too much about what my heavy choice is. Uh, mainly you wanna focus on these two options here in terms of what is your special weapon, what is your primary weapon, and making whatever choice is most optimal for you in these slots. If you're looking for another great Warlock build, but for Stasis, check out my Shade Binder build video on the top right. Or if you're wondering how to become unstoppable in the Crucible, check out the video featuring the Stag on the bottom.